Kiele is the go-to filament for printing items for aesthetic purposes. It makes sense, it is easy to print, it doesn't require a mega souped up printer, it prints fast and it is cheap. And it's getting cheaper, way cheaper. We're getting Eason's PLA Basic in the shop soon and that's gonna be 12 euro per kilo. So why print with another material? I mean, look at this, it's beautiful surface quality. Oh yeah. Now, obviously this isn't really a huge problem if your parts are handled safely and responsibly, but if any of you have kids, then you'll know those words are often lost on them. And we're not just concerned with the part breaking, we're concerned about the broken parts, because these can be sharp. Luckily, along with PLA, other filaments are getting cheaper too, and we will soon have Elegoo's TPU in the shop, which is going to be 18 euro per kilo. Now that is definitely more expensive than the PLA we just spoke about, but it's TPU and it's the king of impact resistance. Except, I mean, it's flexible, it's TPU, it's a flexible filament, obviously it's flexible. So it's not always the best choice for something functional, but if you need something that looks pretty, needs to be rugged, is gonna be handled a lot, and you wanna keep for a long time, this is still a very valid material. This is not going to break. This is not 2018. TPU is not so limited anymore what with recent advances with 3D printing technology. So in this video, we're going to show you how to print something aesthetic out of TPU. And we're working primarily with our TPU A95. However, this will apply to basically any TPU with a high shore hardness. If you're working with something a little softer than A95, well, that could be a different animal altogether. So if you're interested, let us know. We can also do a tutorial video on that. Let's talk about basic things first. The first thing that you should do with not just TPU, but basically any new filament you get is calibration. We choose Orca Slicer in the office and it has great calibration tests built into it. Let's start with flow rate, which is incredibly important for TPU because it generally needs a bit more flow than other filaments. There are a few different flow calibrations depending on how wide ranging you want it to be. For flexible filaments, start with pass 1, which ranges from minus 20% to plus 20% flow. Very, very broad. Take a look at your results and see which is best. You can then move up to the second pass, which is a little more sensitive, and then YOLO. For our TPU A95, we recommend between 5 and 10% increase in flow. I had mine originally set to plus 10% flow, but as we can see from the test, that is a little bit too high. Next we can look at the temperature which is very dependent on what speed you want and you can print at decent speeds with TPU. We haven't been in the 40 millimeter per second era for a very long time. A suitable speed for our TPU is actually 150 millimeters per second and that's for outer walls. For basically everything else 200 is what we normally use. And this isn't even a high flow TPU. This is a pretty normal TPU. And I still see videos on YouTube recommending very conservative TPU speeds. This is 2025, we can bump up that speed. However, there is one caveat to speed, which we will talk about later. Let's do a retraction test now. In the past, TPU has been absolutely notorious for retraction problems, but that was mostly due to people using Bowden style extruders and I haven't used a Bowden extruder printer in a really long time. Passing note, the best printer to use with flexibles is actually something like an open Cartesian like the A1. Anything with a sharp PTFE angle to the extruder is not that great. A good retraction distance for us appears to be around 0.9 millimeters, which is actually more than double what the generic profile said. A max flow rate test is not that important for TPU. We're printing faster, yes, but still well within max flow rates for flexibles. I have ours set in the slicer to 10 millimeters cube per second, which is a little bit above what 200 millimeters per second at 0.1 millimeter layer heights can handle on a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. Max flow rate is, however, important when you are printing some fat layers. Side note, I have never been able to print reliably under 0.1 millimeter layer heights. 0.1, totally fine. 0.08, complicated. There's often extrusion problems, under extrusion usually, and I just wouldn't recommend it. You might also notice that on the flow test, you can see here there are some problems around the perimeters. This is caused by the printer slowing down as it prepares to U-turn. 
It slows down because there is a limit on the max acceleration and the extrusion is affected. So that brings us to the next calibration, pressure advance. You can now load up Orca's pressure advance calibration. Because of TPU's fluid dynamics, I don't want to say fluid dynamics, it's not really fluid. Um, let me rephrase, because of its ooziness, uh, pressure advance calibration can be a, a little bit difficult. You might notice that everything looks pretty much the same at the normal values. TPU seems to require a larger PA value and 0.17 was good for us, which is way higher than PLA, which is usually around 0.04. Okay, tests done. You now have a basic TPU profile and you can start printing, except there are a few smaller things to add. As you can see from this Benji, despite the retraction and temperature tests, we still have some ugly stringing. This is because a Benji is a relatively complex model for TPU and the extruder will disengage multiple times per layer as the nozzle moves from one spot to another. When this happens, the nozzle hops up and the filament retracts and moves. We need the nozzle to stay within the model perimeters rather than passing them. So check that in your slicer. However, that's not always possible for all moves on a Benchy or other complicated parts. For something like this, you won't be able to get rid of all the strings, but a lighter helps. Supports are doable. Use supports, you can remove them. However, there is a balance that you need to know. Flexible filament is flexible. It will sag when unsupported. Even with mild overhangs, it will sag and you'll have ugly surfaces. TPU has two arch nemeses. One of these is overhangs. So should you support all of your overhangs? Eh, not necessarily. Let's get into that. Use supports when needed. However, check your settings. Most people these days use tree supports as their main support type. And these are great. They're, they're fast. However, they're always missing one very crucial setting in your slicer that is very, very important for TPU interfaces. Generally, your slicer will barely print interfaces with tree supports unless they're wide, flat areas. Just load up any organic model and see there are close to zero interfaces. This is because tree supports generally have a very narrow tip and there is not much space there for an interface. So increase the tip size and there you have a wonderful interface generated. This does make the supports slightly harder to remove, but getting a good Z distance will make supports very easy to remove, even with large interfaces, and you'll still get decent surfaces. So test your Z distance. For us, 0.21, which is very close to the default, works fine, but it will depend on the TPU that you have. Even with very thick supports and interfaces, I can still easily remove it from this Benji. As for mild overhangs, well, mild overhangs can look pretty ugly on TPU, so you can support them, but we don't support them. With standard settings, they're ugly as hell, yes, but there is a very easy solution to this, a very light fuzzy skin. Set your fuzzy skin parameters to 0.1 millimeters and watch how those overhang problems literally disappear. This is because the randomized zigzag nozzle movements provide greater support for the next layer. Fuzzy skin also makes the surface a little bit more matte, reducing that unsightly sheen quite a bit, and it also helps cover up any extrusion inconsistencies or VFAs. Okay, the second arch nemesis of TPU is bridging. TPU hates bridging. It's, it's not good. Always avoid bridging if you can. Use supports, and there is a slicer option that you can tick to make sure that bridges are always supported. And there you have it. You now have pretty decent settings for your TPU and you can print high quality models that will pretty much never break. I'm not suggesting dispensing of PLA altogether. PLA is a great material. However, if you need something organic looking that is rugged and rigidity is not key, TPU can be a wonder material. We've sort of been in a bit of a transition period with the price of filament for a little while. It used to be the case where you'd be spending over 20 euro for a good quality spool of PLA. Uh, that is now almost half the price. The main driving force of this has simply been greater demand, which has fueled the scaling up of production of plastics, which originally had limited applications. I mean, where else do you see PLA being used? Things are spreading from PLA, as is plainly obvious, and I think in coming times we will see the price of manufacturing drop even more. At least I hope so. Thanks for tuning in, guys. If you have any questions, you can write us down below and you can also join our 
Discord server where you can talk to us and everyone else about perfect slicer settings. We'll be back with another video soon. So until next time, later. So we teased the tutorial a couple of weeks ago and asked if people had any questions about TPU and we got a few. So from Berlin Berlin 4246, please test or review a dishwasher and food safe hard TPU. So unfortunately, there are not that many food safe TPUs. We do have a couple such as Filamentum's Flex Fill. Technically not a TPU, it's a TPE, but when you mix heat and water, it's not a good combination. And that TPU will not last that long. Lots of TPUs are heat resistant, just, just heat, no water. Um, some, it depends on the variety. Some are like 80 degrees and some can go up to 120 degrees. But as the heat climbs, uh, it, it gets weaker and more flexible as well. A follow-up comment to that was, no 3D print is food safe. The material might be, but the layer lines will cause bacteria to get trapped in there. Do not use 3D prints in contact with food items. So, I mean, unfortunately, sort of, yeah. Um, bacteria will get stuck in pores and the gaps between layer lines. And I really wouldn't recommend a food safe filament for anything but short-term disposable use. From segment 932, can you address how the different hardnesses of TPU affect the printing? And what about different infusion materials into the TPU like TPU GF? Would that work? I mean, with low shore hardness, it's mostly an extrusion thing. Um, the extruder gears would like to actually stretch and squish the filament instead of actually pushing it through the nozzle. Um, it's also stickier, and when it's being deposited, it tends to stick to the nozzle as well as itself, so it can be problematic. Regarding composites, TPU GF and CF is uh, still pretty flexible when it's thin. Um, like as it doesn't have a huge change to the shore hardness when it's a relatively thin or long part. Um, but when that part gets a little bigger, it does become relatively rigid. It's still a bit flexible. Um, but we tested it. Uh, we tested a TPU CF a while back and this stuff is very rigid and can take a major beating. That was, that was a fun test. I'd like to do that again. As for printability, uh, bridging is better, but there's not a huge difference actually. It's still like a super flexible thing when it's going through the extruder gear and through the nozzle. So there's not a huge difference in the settings and speed. Next question is from Speddy6721, one of our frequent commenters. Hey man, uh, I need a TPU that can withstand 85 degrees and IPA vapor. The fill effects I use at the moment starts to delaminate after two hours. So TPUs and alcohols are semi-okay at room temperature. Um, alcohol can make a lot of TPU sort of swell so uh, it's not the best mix and for gaskets and seals and couplers and things like that for alcohols um yeah it's not the best choice and when you combine it with heat it's even worse and uh, like heat and solvents is just not a good mix for any filament actually tpu is however very resistant to most fuels and oils so for those sure why not that's that's okay with heat Mm -mm, don't do that. Okay, guys, if you have any questions, then just let us know down below in the comments. Uh, we'll be back with a video pretty soon. Uh, if you guys want to talk to us on Discord, you can. We have a whole channel full of print fails, as is useful with TPU prints. Enjoy.